Classification of matter. As we define matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So we can define a classify matter as a pure substance or a mixture. A pure substance is that that the composition doesn't change. And a mixture is a is a composition changes. It's a mixture of two or more substances. Pure substances can be subdivided into element or compounds. Element elements are only made out of one particular element or two of atoms of the same element. Compounds contain different types of elements. It could be more than two. For example, water or carbon dioxide. A mixture is also subdivided into a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is the one that is uniform throughout all the sample. For ex you cannot tell what are the components of the sample. For example, uh, salt water or tea. In a heterogeneous mixture, we, by looking at it, can determine what are the components or, uh, for example, if we see cereal with milk, or we see oil and water, you can tell the components of this mixture. So let's do this problem. Copper. Copper is a pure substance and is an element. 14 karat gold is a mixture. And it's a homogeneous mixture because it's hard to tell where are the the um, uh, uh, when you look at it it's hard by just looking at it it's hard to tell what are the components of this mixture carbon dioxide as we see here uh, monoxide sorry as we see here CO it has two different type of elements so it's a pure substance compound fizzy water that's a mixture and it's a heterogeneous mixture you can see the gas you can see the liquid raisin bread is a mixture is a heterogeneous mixture and sodium chloride salt like this you see we have sodium we have chlorine so it's a pure substance element There are three different states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, and they can be uh, classified depending on the shape. For example, the solid has a very defined shape. Liquid and gas, they don't have a defined shape. They take the shape of the container where they are. The volume, solid and liquids have defined volume. Gas takes all the volume of the container where it is. About the arrangement of the particles, in solid, they are well arranged. In um, liquid, they are medium. And in gas, there is no arrangement whatsoever. The particles are going all over the place. And that takes us to the next one, the movement of the particles. In um, the solid, there is no movement of the particles whatsoever. In liquid, is moderate. And in gas, the particles are completely free. Another thing that we do in chemistry is to study, uh, as we study matter, we study the changes in matter. We could have physical changes. Physical changes are those that change the um, appearance, appearance, but it doesn't change the composition. An example is boiling. Any thing like that, boiling, freezing, the composition is the same, it's just in a different physical state. A chemical change involves a reaction, and we could have a change in color, and sometimes these reactions are irreversible. Let's identify these changes as physical or chemical. Digesting food. Digesting food is a chemical change. Patterning up aspirin tablet is a physical change. Evaporation of water is a physical change. Frost forming on grass, that is a physical change. Burning gas, 
that's a chemical change and the last one over here is hard to see but it says melting of ice that is also a physical change so we need to be familiar with the names of the uh, changes of state we have melting when we go from solid to liquid and the opposite of melting is freezing when we have gas to liquid that is condensation the opposite is vaporization and when we have solid to gas is sublimation and the opposite of sublimation is deposition you will be expected to know um, the definition of each one of these concepts so as we can see here we could have what is called a heating curve a heating curve show how much heat is added to pass from um, on we add heat until we reach the um, temperature where the phase change occurs then we keep adding heat until the, the phase change occur and then we can keep adding heat. Please notice that when the physical change occurs there is no change in the temperature. The opposite of a heating curve is a cool, cooling curve and we see that the heat is removed and the behavior is basically the same.